But one of the big debates is whether any such plan wouldn't just complement private insurance, but eventually wipe it out because of pricing discrepancies. The president addressed a question about just this at yesterday's news conference. Why would it drive private insurers out of business? If, 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 private, if private insurers say that the marketplace provides the best quality health care, if they tell us that they're offering a good deal, then why is it that the government, which they say can't run anything, suddenly is going to drive them out of business? That's not logical. So the multi-billion dollar question is, can private insurers actually compete with any kind of a government-run system? Dennis Smith is a senior fellow at the Heritage Foundation, and he joins us now. Uh, Dennis, I'm having a little trouble actually following the president's logic, with all due respect, because private insurers like Aetna, UNH, Cigna, they have to negotiate rates with hospitals, et cetera, right? But yet Medicare, which I guess is how the pricing would be based, is dictated, right? There's not a lot of back and forth going on to determine paybacks. That, that, that's exactly right. And what we're really seeing is a shift in the explanations as to why we want to have to have a government health plan. When you go back to the original thinking of uh, uh, people who have put together the single payer system, uh, they realized that that was not uh, going to uh, go over well with the American people. Then they shifted uh, to the government health plan as a competitor when they know all along that the real purpose of the government health plan is to overwhelm uh, the private sector yeah. and uh, push it out. Well, and here's the thing. I mean, and, and health care is very complicated. So here's a basic analogy, and tell me if this is a good analogy. If it costs American Airlines, let's say they want to charge $200 to fly from Newark, New Jersey to Las Vegas, and the government starts a, an airline, government airlines, and the government airline says, we're going to charge 150 to fly from Newark to Las Vegas, period. American Airlines has to charge 150 or nobody's going to fly them. That's Isn't exactly right. Is that the same right. way this is going to, that, you know, they're going to dictate rates, and unless Aetna and those companies follow suit, whether or not they make any money, they're going to have to do it. Otherwise, they're going to lose all the corporate America's health insurance plans. I, I think you do have the right analogy, and the whole idea that the government health plan uh, will still hold the risk, uh, then they can charge whatever price they want, uh, they will lower the cost of the premiums, they will give uh, better benefits, etc., because it's all going to be backed by the federal government. Private sector in, in any industry cannot compete against that. Well, is there any way, Dennis, for us to cut do major cuts in health care costs without cutting the benefits here? Absolutely. There are, and this is why we ought to be focusing on the things that we will work, the things that will lower costs for American families, change the tax code, give people, give individuals the same tax advantage that uh, you get when you buy coverage through your employer. Fix Medicaid. Uh, again, we uh, yesterday in uh, the Wall Street Journal, the administration spokesman was quoted as saying, well, it's too early to say how low-income people are going to get their coverage. I mean, Congress is marking up now. Secretary Sebelius is testifying this morning. She's still talking about eight principles. We need to know the details. Uh, what, what will the president support? What will he absolutely oppose? What are the deal breakers? Uh, is the deal breaker uh, an individual mandate? He has changed his position on the individual mandate, apparently. Uh, we don't really know uh, what the administration is really going to be for and what, it, what it's against. I guess the basic question going back to pricing, and I hate to beat the pricing horse to death, Dennis, is can private insurers, now people say the margins that these private insurers are way too high, they charge too much. Maybe that's the case. I, I don't know. But I spent a good deal of time the past weekend speaking with an orthopedic surgeon in private practice who said, very simply to me, Brian, doctor, now of course he's got his own angle right but he said brian doctors can't make money on much of the medicare reimbursement rates and if this private or public private insurance plan goes to those rates it's going to put a lot of doctors out of business is that true or false i i think it is a very legitimate point again because we see the private sector is charging its private customers more because of the losses on the public side, the losses through Medicare and the losses through Medicaid. So now they're charging their private customers uh, more to offset that. Uh, part of the problem that we see in the utilization rates is when you are spending someone else's money, 
uh, your behavior is different than when you're spending your own money. Uh, and that is part of the problem that we see in third-party systems, uh, but it is certainly what we see in Medicare and Medicaid. All right, Dennis and Smith. Go ahead, wrap it up, Dennis. And I was going to say, and when, when that dynamic happens, uh, those costs have to be offloaded to somewhere else. Then when government is, charged, uh, is in charge, they finally decide, well, gee, the budget won't sustain this, so now we're going to have to cut back. We're going to have to cut back on benefits. We're going to have to cut back on reimbursement right. to providers. That's what we see in Medicaid going on right now, and that's the lesson we ought to be paying attention to. Uh, well, you know, okay, very quickly, then. I was going to leave it there, but i got to ask you a follow-up. So let's say, you know, we hear there's 47 million. We've already kind of debunked the, the number because millions are eligible for programs they don't take advantage of. Millions more can afford it. They make 75000 a year or more, but they don't sign up, et cetera. We need to make sure every American has some kind of health insurance, right? So, so then what is the answer? Is it then just to put those people on the government plan, or is it to force the private insurers to pick up a couple of million other people as well? Well, first make it more affordable for the families who want to purchase insurance on their own. But as I said, the tax code discriminates against uh, families. Uh, so let's level the playing field there. Dennis, that will on, that reduce note, on that note, I read something. It was from the, a survey done by the government that a middle-income family with individual coverage spends 22% of household income on health care. And if you get it through your employer, it's only 8%. There's a huge disadvantage there. The people with employer-based health care, they consume too much of it. Well, they, because the cost uh, in many respects is hidden from them, right. and that's why we need these other reforms as well. Uh, people who are spending their own money uh, use services more appropriately than when you're spending somebody else's money. All right, Dennis Smith, Senior Fellow at the Heritage Foundation. Now we're really going to leave it there, Dennis. I have a feeling the debate is not yet over then, and the debate we need to have next, we need to get people healthier and focus more on prevention rather than simply paying for everybody who's getting ill in this country. Dennis, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.